So if you've ever been in a classroom with 100 or, well, in this particular case, we've got a monumental amount of information. I just can't get it out of your heads, unfortunately, because I only have 12 minutes left. But the whole idea is engage the students and, and, and allow them to share their experiences because, unfortunately for you, they have, they're worth a lot more than what you have to say. Um, and Twitter's doing a little bit of that, by the way. So the halo effect, this, um, for you video gamers, yes, that's the same halo. Uh, this, is, um, this is actually a study that um, said if you look at the, the average number of interactions that occur between students or between students and instructors over a given week in a typical classroom environment, it's 100. That's 20 per day. That's probably being very generous, actually, if you think about you know, the, a typical environment. And any of you who've played Halo, there's over one million interactions uh, you know, in that video game. And so um, we are a much more interactive society. And we have to find a way to not only help the digital natives co-create, but also we need to be more interactive. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to be interactive here. And I'm going to show you a cool clip from the Matrix. Yes, you knew we would get to this. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to just absorb the 44 seconds you're about to see and uh, you know, don't worry about why you're seeing it. Just sit back, let it give you goosebumps uh, like it does me, and then we'll talk about why I'm showing this to you and what possible relevance it could have. How did you do that? Do what? You moved like they do. I've never seen anyone move that fast. It wasn't fast enough. Can you fly that thing? Not yet. Operator. Tank, I need a pilot program for a B-212 helicopter. Hurry. Let's go. OK, I think you got the point. Can Moodle do that? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. No, that, that, that's Moodle 3.0. I know. It's coming. Um, so wow. I mean, that blows your mind, doesn't it? I mean, that is experiential learning uh, you know, in action, right? So what happened? Trinity needs to learn to fly this helicopter. This is, um, for those of you who know the movie, uh, this is a matter of life and death. She's, she's on the, uh, the roof of the agent's headquarters um, about to be killed. Um, so she calls her LMS, right? So she gets on her phone <laughs> and she says, Tank, I need a flight program for a, you know, right? So Tank, her LMS, finds the helicopter experiential learning object. Uh, and he, of course, downloads it directly to her brain in 10 seconds, which is actually the only fantasy piece of this entire um, section is uh, we don't yet have the technology that allows us to download uh, the experiential learning piece in, in 10 seconds. But then she employs cognitive encoding, right, uh, to transfer to long-term memory and uh, uses her new skills to fly away to safety. Now, um, and save the world. For those of you who remember what happens right after this scene, uh, she crashes the helicopter into a giant glass building. So, uh, yes, that's right. That's right. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So we're we're crossing the chasm. Here's the idea. Um, again, yesterday was was a lot about academic. Um, I think there's definitely a place for academic. I'm about to show you an academic case study that I think is really important. Um, experiential learning has the ability to cross the chasm from academic to workplace learning. Um, one of the challenges we have in the workplace from a skills perspective is that academic isn't doing a good enough job giving our students the skills they need to perform at the level we need them to perform. And it, it's not academic's fault, it's just you know, potentially a flawed model. So if you look on the, um, what I like to call just in case side, I have a degree in genetics just in case I ever wanted to splice genes, and here I am uh, talking about something totally unrelated. Um, 
On the other side, you have workplace learning, which is on the job, and this is the kind of learning that you need to be productive and um, a contributing member of the team. So is there a way that you can cross that chasm um, and accomplish all of these different strengths, both on the just-in-case side, you know, you can learn a broad range of skills, you can catalog those skills, uh, it's very organizational in view in the sense that we can determine what the learning objectives are and if we do a good job you'll end with, those, with that catalog of learning objectives. The problem is it's not just in time. Uh, you don't get an immediate result because of the whole golf pro dip thing we showed you before and it doesn't have the individual view that the just in time kind of on the job training has. Now the just in time on the job training isn't organizational, it doesn't have cataloging, etc. So is there a way that we can kind of combine these two? Um, so I'm going to show you a case study real quick, um, I think literally real quick, uh, from the University of Phoenix, which is a very large um, online university. This is actually the Axia College of the University of Phoenix, uh, which has about 200,000 plus students in the United States. They're all online. Um, they have an Associate of Arts degree in 20 concentrations. Uh, last year they expanded from two IT degrees to six IT degrees and they added things like web design, IT support, programming, etc. And they, this expansion happened on the foundation of experiential learning. So what they said was, gosh, you know, our, our existing programs are good, but is there a way that we can knock it out of the park by bringing in much more kind of hands-on experiential tools at the core of the learning program? And I'll show you first kind of what what we did and then I'll show you the results. We have some pretty interesting results to share with you. So um, the y-axis here is the scale of sophistication. It's like the sea of tranquility. Uh, on the bottom is the simple up to advanced. So this is how, how um, sophisticated the content was, how sophisticated the tool was. Um, and then on the bottom, the x-axis is the spectrum of content scope. Uh, which, which starts at narrow on the left-hand side, so it's just kind of narrow and, and simple all the way you know, to a more broad advance. So the, the goal here, as you can see from the arrow, is to go up and to the right. Um, so we started with a thing called a student desktop, which effectively gave the student in the cloud access to all of the tools, Adobe CS4 or programming tools, whatever it is that they needed. Um, because these students in the past had to download all the software, or go to the store and buy it, and there was lots of challenges with, you know, do I have the right version? And, and then when they went to something, you know, went to their uh, grandma's house for Thanksgiving, they couldn't do their homework, you know, et cetera. So we put that all in the cloud and gave them access to a electronic locker where they could store all their work and all their projects all in the cloud. And it was all kind of personal. 